Hi. So it's been a while since I've done a more like crafty video on this channel. I, I definitely still like doing crafty things. I just haven't had the time, I guess. And maybe I've also been trying to like avoid shopping as much as possible when it's not necessary. But Pennsylvania is in the like green step of handling Corona. So, uh, you know, I'm still wearing my mask trying to social distance as much as possible. But I felt like it was okay to go out and buy some craft supplies to make this bulletin board. I've actually been wanting to make this for a long time, but like I said, I, I had just been putting it off. What inspired me to do this project was a while ago, we got a yard sign for a certain political candidate. I don't wanna to get too political on my channel, but I will say that recently we decided to take the sign down because this candidate dropped out of the race. I guess America wasn't really feeling the burn. Anyway, the box that it came in was like, the perfect size for a bulletin board. And the other thing that inspired me to do this, I think it was two things that kind of happened at the same time. A lot of the time when I finish teaching an ESL class, a bunch of the students want to take like goodbye pictures and we have like kind of like a party on the last day where people bring food from their countries and all this stuff. And I was like looking at these pictures and thinking, man, I wanna like hang these up and like remember all my wonderful students. So the perfectly sized box plus all these pictures that I wanted to hang up, really just motivated me to make this bulletin board. And the reason that making a bulletin board from an old box was not like something that sounded like out of the question for me is because when I was really young, my mom made me a custom bulletin board from my room, which she made out of a trifold board like you use for like a science fair project. And I thought that was so cool. I, I don't know, I, I thought it was really creative. I guess it stuck with me enough that like 15 or almost 20 maybe years later, I saw this old box and I was like, bulletin board. So that's what we're doing today. And full disclosure, a lot of this project was inspired by a similar project at canary.com. I'm just kind of making my own cheaper version of it, but I will link the original version in the description. Heads up, this is kind of a tutorial, but also it's me just filming the process of me trying something that I hadn't tried before. So if you are going to do this project, watch the whole video first, because I make some mistakes that I think are funny and I'm gonna share them with you guys, but like, it's trial and error. So I would really recommend watching through the whole thing one time to get, you know, these are the good things to do and these are the mistakes that Becca made, and then, then you can do this project with that information in mind. But without further ado, let's get into the project. So for this project, I used an old, very flat box. Mine was about 36 inches by 24 inches. Three to four feet of the fabric of your choice. I went with four and a half to be extra cautious. It turned out to be way too much fabric. Three yards of cotton batting. We somehow wound up with six yards. I don't know how it was. Oh. We needed three feet. <gasps> oh my gosh. I just realized while I was recording this, we asked for three yards when we only needed three feet. Okay, three feet of cotton padding. Golly. A staple gun, or if you don't have a staple gun, a stapler works fine too. Two six yard spools of ribbon. This is the first instance of me messing up. I definitely needed two, I only bought one. A box of pretty push pins and some sort of mechanism to hang everything up. Now, I started out with these sawtooth hangers thinking that they would work. Uh, totally didn't work. If you're doing this project with anything that's made out of cardboard, sawtooth hangers are probably not gonna work. So I'll give some more details about how I wound up hanging mine towards the end of the video. I also wound up using a couple things that I didn't exactly take pictures of. There are smaller things that you probably have lying around the house. It's just scissors and a measuring tape. And to hang it up, I wound up using paper clips. Again, more details about that towards the end. So the first thing I did was stretch out my fabric over the box just to make sure that I had the right amount. I definitely had plenty, as you can see. I had twice as much as I needed. And before I got started, I noticed that I had some wrinkles in the fabric from where it had been folded in the bag. I am a millennial. I don't own an iron. So I'm using this life hack that I learned from Chris Yu over at Chris Soup. Check her out if you haven't already. Basically, you can just spray water on any fabric that's normally okay to get wet. And when the water dries, the wrinkles have disappeared. It's like magic. Once your fabric's straightened out, it's time to cut off the excess. Again, I had literally double what I needed. So I just went down the line that it had been folded in half and cut down that line and bam, exactly the amount of fabric I needed. Shooting for the stars, being to be number one. Picking a distraction right down my face. 
As you're cutting the fabric, you want to make sure you have at least two inches extra on each side so that you can fold it over the board. Do the same thing with the batting. With the batting, you don't need any extra to fold over. You just want it to meet the edges of the board exactly. Once your batting is ready, you can go around with a stapler. Here's me rejoicing that the stapler actually stuck into the cardboard. Moment of truth. Yeah, boy. And secure the batting to the entire perimeter of the board. Now lay your fabric flat on the floor and place your batting and board upside down on top of it. You want this to be as even as possible so that you don't end up with one side where the fabric is really hard to fold over. That's what happened to me. And then you can fold your fabric over and start stapling it to each side on the back of the board. When you get to the corners, you want to make sure that you fold it in like this kind of triangle way. That way there's no unwanted fabric peeking out on the front of the board. And this is what I was talking about earlier. One side was definitely more difficult to staple because I didn't have enough excess fabric. It, it turned out fine, but it's definitely better to make sure you have a little bit of extra on each side. And yes, the back is not pretty. It's got a lot of you know excess fabric hanging around, but the front is what really matters. Now that you have your fabric base, it's time to start adding the ribbon. Instead of using any measurements, I recommend actually holding the ribbon up to your board so you can see how much you need. Because I knew that these first two pieces were going to be the same size, I just used the first one to measure the second one. Again, make sure when you're cutting these that you have like an inch extra. If they're too short, it's gonna be a huge pain to connect them to the back of the board. Staple each ribbon to one corner, and I like to turn my board over so that I make sure there's no twists in the ribbon as it's going across the board. When you're sure that the ribbon's laying flat, flip the board back over and staple down the other corners. This is what I was talking about. I accidentally cut my first piece of ribbon a little bit too short and it was the hardest one to staple. Now, honestly, you can save the push pins for the last step, but I was really excited to see what it looked like and to make sure that the push pins actually held. So I went ahead and measured out the exact center of the board and put a push pin in where the two pieces of ribbon met. This next section is not really a step, it's just me trying to figure out how to get this to look pretty with only one spool of ribbon, uh, and then finding out that it's not possible. It's not happening, Becca. Sorry. So I decided to do what I could for that day, and I measured out the center of each side where I would be putting the remaining ribbon that I had. I guess if you're good at eyeballing, this isn't necessary, but it really helped me ensure that it was going to be pretty even looking and I was going to have some nice straight lines. So for each piece of ribbon, again, you're stapling to your first marker going across like a diagonal of the board and stapling to the back over there. I did this four times and then I ran out of ribbon and waited until the next day to get more. But first I went ahead and put push pins in all the intersections, just kind of get an idea of what it was looking like. And I was pretty content with how it looked so far. A couple days later, I came back ready to add the rest of the ribbon. By this point, I had realized that it's actually better to mark the points we are going to be stapling in Sharpie on the back. Putting push pins on the front was kind of pointless because when you flip it over, you can't see the push pins anymore. So I realized, we'll just mark it in Sharpie because no one's gonna see the back anyway. So here's some footage of me marking out exactly where I wanted the ribbon to meet the edges. I wound up doing three points on each side, five if you count the corners. Mm -hmm. 
After I had those marked, I was ready to go around and staple each piece of ribbon in the corners of the board. Let me see. Probablemente voy a decir algunas cosas en español y otras cosas en inglés porque hay mucho a decir y no creo que puedo decir todo en, like, sin tomar 10 minutos. Um, así, primero con el viejo. And after I did the corners, I went around and got those sort of middle sections so that the board looked nice and full. Once your ribbons are all secured with staples, go back and put push pins at each intersection. Honestly, my push pin work did not result in the most even parallel lines, but I decided that once I had stuff on the bulletin board, it would be pretty easy to cover up. And the last thing that I attempted to do was attach the sawtooth hook. I quickly realized that these are intended to be nailed into wood, like a wooden frame, so they really don't stay in cardboard. Here's me just realizing that that isn't gonna work, so I gave up and turned off the camera. But then I realized that at least that day I could cut off all the excess fabric on the back so that it looks a little bit tidier. So I went ahead and did that and then tried another method for hanging. The woman at the fabric store actually suggested command strips, so I was like, okay, she's an expert in this. If she says command strips, command strips will probably work. So I hung up the board with command strips. If you end up taking this route, make sure you stick the strips to the box itself, not the fabric. They really don't like fabric. And for a while, the command strips seemed like they were gonna work. Like I got the board decorated, it stayed up for a while, and then the next morning, yeah. So I needed to try something else. I had the idea of using string instead of nails to secure the sawtooth hook. So to do this, I had to detach the ribbon and fabric from the top of the board. That way I could run string through the board itself. And basically what I did was I tied the string in a knot to one end of the sawtooth hook, used a needle to pull the string through the board. The needle was actually really hard to get through the board, so I had to make the hole bigger by using a push pin and then hammer the needle through by using scissors. I guess you could use a hammer if you had one on you. And then I pulled the string back through and tied a knot to the other end of the sawtooth hook. I don't even know really why I'm telling you this other than the fact that like, I'm proud, it was an inventive, creative way to hang something. However, it didn't work. Uh, the string was too thin. So like, as soon as I put any pressure on it, it snapped. This could theoretically work if you have some thicker string, but then it would be hard to use a needle to get it through the board. It's kind of this like balancing act. There might be a sweet spot where you can get this to work, but I could not. So I sat there thinking, well, what's thicker than string? Wire, but we don't have any wire. So I was like, what do we have in the house? that's similar to wire. Paper clips. <laughs> yeah, so what wound up working was I took paper clips sort of linked together in this configuration going through the board. So I tried to get footage of it. I feel like it's kind of hard to see, but basically what it is, is this is where the board hangs, like a nail goes right here. The board itself is right here. So it goes through where it's only one, obviously. And then this is in the front side of the board covered up by fabric, linking it all together so that it doesn't pull back through when the nail is pulling on it. So it was kind of like my earlier strategy with a string, just stronger because 
it's it's paper clips. And I thought this was the stupidest idea ever. Like I was like, it's paper clips. Like it's not gonna work. People just have paper clips around, lying around the house. It has to be something more complex, more expensive than this. No, paper clips worked so well. I hung it up on this nail that I have in the attic, just cause like, if I went downstairs and tried to get it hung up on a nail downstairs and it didn't work and it landed on my desk again, I was just gonna be frustrated. So I was like, I'm just gonna hang it up in the attic and not like give myself the feeling that it's done, if that makes sense. So it hung up here for two, maybe three days and it didn't fall. I actually kind of forgot it was up here for a second. And then I was like, oh yeah, the bulletin board. And it was still here. And I went, okay, well, the paper clips worked. So finally I took it off the wall, stapled the fabric and ribbon back to the top of the bulletin board so that it looks nice and pretty. I also took this opportunity to even out a few of my lines while I was feeling really motivated. But I was still under the mentality that even if it's not straight, it's fine. Happy Pride! Then my wonderful husband helped me use a drill, because I don't, I don't know how to use a drill, I'm still learning. But he helped me use a drill and put in one of those things that keeps a screw really secure. So we put a nice screw in the wall for it to hang on. So thank you, Eric, I love you. And when we hung it up, it turned out that I had not put the paper clips in the exact middle of the board, so it did not hang evenly. I'm gonna leave that up to you. But here's a really cool thing about paper clips. You can bend them. So I just bent the paper clips to where it was nice and flat exactly in the middle of the board, and boom, level bulletin board. Eric also put up this office paper holder tray thing for me, um, so I was really grateful for that too. And once everything was how I wanted it, I first went back and reinserted some push pins after being moved around my house so much, some of them had gotten a little bit loose, so I had to make sure they were all nice and secure in there. And then I finally decorated the board. It was really satisfying to finally get this thing put up. It, it took a lot longer than I expected. Um, and hopefully if anyone actually does end up doing this project, you learn from my mistakes so that it's a little bit easier for you. But now I have a really nice office set up with some decorations to give it a little bit more character. So I'm really happy about that. And yeah, I'm also just happy that I was able to make like a fully customized bulletin board. I really wanted something that was gonna match our weird like dusty pink walls. And there aren't a lot of good colors that match that. So this was really nice because it let me choose exactly what color fabric and ribbon and pins and all that stuff I wanted for about the same price, if not cheaper. And yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I like upcycling things. One, because it's, you know, better for the environment than just like throwing away a box and having to create a whole new push pin board. But yeah, it's also just fun to look for inspiration in things that you might normally see as trash. And instead of just throwing them out, thinking, oh, how can I use this for something that I already kind of want anyway? So yeah, overall, this was a fun project. I actually have another upcycling video on this channel where I turned some of my husband's old pajama pants into a sweater for our dog. So go check that out if you haven't already. Like I said earlier, I'm by no means like an expert in any of these crafty things. I'm just kind of sharing my journey of figuring out cool ways to reuse things that I might I might have just thrown away. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what sort of project you would like to see me do next. Thanks so much for watching. See ya.